Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is October 25th, 2018, and this is our episode number 374. Today's randomly selected company is Petenach. Uh, I remember that we did a few episodes on Petenach not a long time ago, actually, uh, but it's been randomly selected. It, we do have another semester, so it's okay. Let's take another look at Petenach after two se- after two quarters of 2018. So if if you look here and at this point, since we have information about uh, almost all companies in the Brazilian stock market, <clears throat> I always do the little exercise of understanding why I'm not an investor in the companies that I'm not. Of course, we should know by heart the reasons why we invest in the companies that we do. But in the many, many companies that we don't invest, it's nice to understand why. Okay, so uh, debt to equity here, a tiny bit above what we would like. So 0.57 versus the top uh, of the spectrum, which would be 0.5. Okay, so liabilities to equity at 1.15 not too bad and also we don't have you know like a long history here uh, at all but we see uh, uh, a positive movement here so net equity grew uh, debt to equity went down and so did liabilities to equity <clears throat> okay our current ratio here not too good they're don't they're not holding enough cash uh, to have some cushion here uh <clears throat> of course all all this is done in quite simplistic terms uh we're not looking underneath the hood to see if we can get more information here at least not yet all right so in the numbers here uh we only have <clears throat> eight years worth which is a short history uh I kind of trust that these numbers are not available, even though I left the rows here. But as you can see here, it's very nice that they have been posting better results over the last four years, both in terms of earnings and in terms of free cash flow, as you can see here pretty clearly. Uh, However, the multiples here weren't uh, the price relative to these results didn't look extremely great even though it's not bad take a look here uh price to free cash flow over the last five years at 13.43 you know if we were to to believe with high certainty or high trust that this is the future of petenacci this is a trend and they'll continue to deliver uh better and better results this could be a steal but i don't I really don't. This is a textile company, uh, and uh, these companies have suffered mightily worldwide simply because in Asia the, they uh, were, they're able to 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 produce textiles at incredibly cheap prices. <clears throat> All right, so onwards to today. Let's see. okay so we can start by the liabilities here and net equity so the consolidated numbers uh, give us the net equity and as you can see here, 232 million. So, so far they're showing a very nice trajectory here. So let's take a look at uh, liabilities. So liabilities here, 170 plus seven, oops, 170 plus 73 right here again sorry this is so easy 170 plus 73 243 
And we will see uh, liabilities to equity going down here. We can already tell. <clears throat> Okay, onerous to debt, total debt. So we take current debt here, 52, and we add uh, long-term debt of 50, so 102, and we can add this 1 million here. It says credore, so, you know, uh, people, yeah, it's, it's also a debt. Uh, 103. So all in all here, we can already tell that the ratios have improved. And they have improved so much so <clears throat> that the debt to equity has fallen within our uh, desired range. So this is like a, a big plus here. Okay, onwards to current ratio. So 231 divided by 170. So 1.36, not quite uh, inside our desired or even acceptable current ratio, but it's grown back towards what we would like. So honors to results. So we'll do a simple uh, projection for the year. So we'll take the first semester and multiply by two. It may not reflect reality, but it doesn't really matter because we're never too concerned with just this year. We, we I always try to look um, multi years as um, as a basis for understanding the problem. So four six three times two nine twenty six. So. No, actually no. Okay. Yeah, they're already giving us a full year here, so the rolling 12 months. Fine. Okay. So 463. <clears throat> so a tiny bit down here, uh, but I wouldn't put much weight on this number in terms of precision. All right, so in terms of profits, 18 million rolling 12 months, fine. So again, not quite as good, uh, but still in like the best trend, especially after you com compare this with the numbers from 2010 to 2014 is like another plateau much better plateau that they seem to be kind of maintained so great good for them and free cash also they're all also giving the rolling 12 months here it's kind of helpful uh, so 35 million minus 13 22 So now, what we can do, I'm going to do a few things here. I'm trying to learn some more keyboard shortcuts. <clears throat> All right, so here I'm going to do average and include 2018 even though it's projected and this will be five years worth of results and free cash nice um, and finally uh, to begin thinking clearly, let's see how much Pitanachi costs right now. Yeah. 
This is strange. Let's see four. Let's see if it changes anything here. Okay. So it's saying market cap at 136. All right. Really? Okay, I'm curious now about when I did the videos. Let's see here. So, uh, in terms of debt to equity here. Yeah, I remember this video very well. Uh, a viewer uh, pointed out uh, quite brilliantly that th there was a wide discrepancy between the common and the preferred for Petanacci. Uh, and what I remember is that I still thought it was too uncertain. And this was in May. So, what I wanted to understand here is what it costs around May. So apparently the price was around, it's hard mm -hmm. to say here, but it was somewhat more expensive indeed. So now it's 136. So you can see here that the multiples, if you consider five years here, the multiples look pretty cheap. Uh, now it, it would be a matter of believing that this is a new Pitanachi this is a new normal here. The, these last five years will be maintained, or that um, the actual Petenacci is some something between this money losing company here and this money earning company here. In terms of uh, our videos and the study of Petenacci, definitely. Uh, this makes us want to take a second look at Pitanachi because when you're buying a company for a for a, a multiple in terms of price to free cash flow of 6.85 as a rule of thumb and this is nothing to get too stuck to but it's 100 divided by 6.85 you are talking about a 14.6 annualized return, expected return, uh, which is pretty nice. So, and this is free cash flow, this is not earning. So, this is more, a little bit more of a solid, uh, trustworthy multiple. So, okay, so let's come back to Petenacci and look at it from more angles. I don't know exactly which. I'll also look at the video the videos that uh, we've done in the past for Pitanachi, and I'll try not to repeat myself too much there. Maybe just recapitulate and deepen our understanding of Pitanachi. All right, so thank you very much. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're still here uh, and you're not a subscriber, please consider becoming a subscriber by clicking or tapping on the subscribe button. This way you can get notifications and an occasional email from this fine uh, enterprise called YouTube telling you uh, that we have new episodes. I invite you to watch our past episodes of which we have 373 at this point. I invite you to watch our future episodes and as always if you have questions, suggestions, criticism and especially if you spotted mistakes in the analyses, please leave a message, leave a comment in the video and I'll write you back as soon as I can. Have a beautiful day. Bye bye.